This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 371. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. I'm your host, Dan Z, drinking One Nation coffee out of my black and orange Rancho Obi-Wan coffee mug, bringing the second coffee with Kenobi of this week, and it's a very special show because Steve Sansweet, the CEO of Rancho Obi-Wan, and an amazing guy and good friend of the show, is here to join us to talk about all the things that are available on November 21st at the Rancho Obi-Wan Virtual Gala, the amazing guests lined up, the scavenger hunts and collectibles that will be offered as well as talked about so many fun things to discuss and then after the break i have two of the creatives behind the hasbro star wars toy line along with some of my other star wars friends in the world of star wars media and covering this amazing galaxy far far away they're going to ask the gentleman from hasbro about what we can expect and what's going on in the world of star wars and hasbro it's a fun show and just in time for thanksgiving too so pull up a chair Grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first? Joining us today for a cup of coffee is returning guest and the CEO of Rancho Obi-Wan, Steve Sansweet. Steve, welcome back to Coffee with Kenobi. Thank you, Dan. It's always a pleasure. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you, my friend. This is a great time of year because normally when it's the fall, one of the things I know that is on my calendar is to go to visit you and go to the Rancho Obi-Wan Gala, which is just one of the most wonderful experiences for Star Wars fans. And this year, of course, we've got COVID. Everyone knows that. But what is really exciting about this, which I feel like helps to bridge that gap to a sense of normalcy, is you and your team at Rancho Obi-Wan have the virtual Rancho Obi-Wan Gala. Tell us all about that. So we've been working on this for just a number of months. And... um, we are having a virtual Rancho Obi-Wan gala fundraiser on November 21st uh, with a preview uh, on the 20th. And um, this is for Star Wars fans all over the world. So people who have not been able to come to our galas in the past, uh, people who have not been able to travel in the U.S. uh, to get here, uh, for the gala, people who have visited Rancho Obi-Wan, people who are new to Rancho Obi-Wan. It's a great way at a very reasonable price. Um, it's $30 for a ticket, and that gets you... We're not quite sure yet how much programming we have. It'll be a minimum of seven hours and maybe as much as nine hours of programming. Um, interactive conversations with Star Wars celebrities and Star Wars fellow fans. Um it's going to be a, a great day. Again, it's Saturday, November 30th, and you can buy your tickets at RanchoObiWan.org, and the stream will take place at RanchoObiWan.org. And once you get buy your ticket, we'll be sending you a, a, a link and a password uh, to be able to get on and see the stream. So in addition to the conversations with such people as Dave Filoni, Ashley Eckstein, uh, James Arnold Taylor, Sam Witwer, sound engineer and four-time Oscar winner Ben Burt, and many other people who I will go into will talk about. Um, we'll also have our first ever Rancho Obi-Wan Gala costume contest. Mm. You'll do this by taking a photo of you or your kids in costumes. There'll be prizes for that. Um, we're going to have a scavenger hunt. I love the scavenger hunt. Our... our uh, Board of Directors member and fellow collector Duncan Jenkins has come up with a great idea for an online scavenger hunt that involves 10 different items that you will be able to find in your house if you're a Star Wars fan, moderate collector, um, and there are three different levels for each of the 10 categories. So Mm -hmm. one level, you get three points if you're spot on, you'll get two points if really good try, and you'll get one point if it's, well, we're all fans here. So uh, it, there's, a way to, there's a way to finesse this. And the person who ends up with the most number of points and gets the photo in the quickest will be able to uh, win the scavenger hunt and will win a prize. 
Um, we also have a prize wheel, another interactive thing. So you'll be able to buy tickets to the prize wheel, and based on what number ends up when we spin with your name, Ann, will, Ann Newman will be doing the spinning of the prize wheel, and we'll have all kinds of Star Wars prizes and then maybe a couple of DC action figures for the booby prize or <laughs> something like that. Um, we have a live auction. One of the highlights of the Rancho Obi-Wan Gala is always the live auction, and we have auction software that will enable us to do it. Every, uh, every gala for the last several years, uh, Charmaine Cuddy in, of Canada has knitted wonderful Star Wars blankets. And, you know, you need blankets when you live in Canada in the winter. And this is a perfect blanket. You'll be able to see all of these online fairly soon. Uh, this is Baby Yoda, Mando, and the Perambulator, or whatever that thing is called, <laughs> in fall colors. So that's going to be really cool. We'll have a uh, cast and crew item from Season 1 of Mandalorian, and um, uh, prototypes from Funko of unpainted, unfinished uh, bobbleheads, pops. Um, we're doing a, a live how to draw a Star Wars character with Spencer Brinkerhoff. Oh, You'll wow. be able to download a, an instruction sheet and just use a quarter, 25 cent piece, and that'll start you on your way. That circle will lead to a Star Wars character. We're going to have, uh, as part of this, but as a separate uh, function, a trivia contest. There'll be a live Q&A with me, and then we'll have exclusive gala merchandise. Mm. So not a whole lot of stuff, but uh, <laughs> enough to whet your appetite. A patch, the gala logo, and uh, a, a pin, and several hoodies with the gala logo on it, too. Oh. So... I'm excited. <laughs> it's amazing. Let me, about, let me tell you about some of the other people that we're going to have conversations yeah, with. Please. A lot of artists. Um, I find Star Wars artists are just amazing people who have had a passion for art and Star Wars all their lives. So we're going to have, in addition to Spencer Brinker, Matt Bush, Joe Caroni, uh, Lawrence Noble is responsible for the Bronze Yoda. Uh, that has become the icon of Lucasfilm and, and it's all its headquarters here and in uh, Southeast Asia. Mark Ratz coming in from Australia, Chris Trevis, Jerry Vanderstelt, Brian Rood, and then another kind of artist, Bonnie Burton, a writer, oh. social media guru, and Crafts Maven Superior. And she's done the Star Wars Crafts book, and we have a lot of her crafts here in Rancho Obi Wan. Bonnie will be coming along. Ryder Windham, who has written probably more Star Wars books. I know you've written one recently, Dan, <laughs> but Ryder has written over 60 of them, so you and I have a bunch to catch up with. What to add up. Uh, yeah. So uh, and then we have Don Bees, who was the uh, R2 Wrangler for the prequels and a former Lucasfilm archivist. Uh, Oliver Steeples, who uh, from the U.K., who uh, built the R2 units for Episode Seven. Um, Howard Rothman, who we can uh, blame for a lot of the expenditures at Rancho Obi-Wan <laughs> over the years, since Howard was a 37-year veteran of Lucasfilm and was head of licensing for most of that time and made a lot of the decisions that led to the cool merchandise that we've had all of these years. Um, let's see. I'm going through my list here. Oh, uh, Alvin Johnson, founder of the 501st Legion, and uh, Tom Hutchins, founder of the Mando Mercs, who are certainly in the spotlight these days. Uh, Michael McMaster, another uh, builder of props, built the, uh, um, builds droids for Lucasfilm and Disney, built the, chopper, the first actual chopper droid, um, and uh, built the uh, Jawa Sandcrawler base. Cool. That was at Celebration and now is at Rancho Obi-Wan, along with the Tonti IV Carter, which is also here at Rancho Obi-Wan. Chris Bartlett, who is uh, a, a, an actor, the C-3PO uh, a personal appearance and commercial actor, and also has now appeared in The Mandalorian in Season 1 and will also be in Season 2. Oh. Uh, Dan Madsen, the head of the fan club. 
Uh, Nita Strauss, who's a uh, rock guitarist for the Alice Cooper touring band and a huge Star Wars fan. Um, and Ben Stevens, who uh, ran Dallas Comic Con and uh, Star Wars Fan Days. And uh, Ben now runs something that just opened called Galactic Gallery, which features the artwork of Drew Struzan. Wow. Uh, so uh, J Jim Swearingen, Kenner designer, who was the guy who I just didn't realize was the guy who constructed the prototype missile firing Boba Fett back in 1977 and 78. And John Scolari of the Ralph McQuarrie archives. I think I've covered almost everybody, but I've probably left out some. So it's going to be a long day an entertaining day. And you'll be able to tune in and tune out whenever you want and listen to some of your favorite people and find out some new facts and just, uh, have a lot of fun. There, there are so many wonderful things. The whole time we were, you were talking, I was just smiling and I was just excited because I've been to three of the galas and I know that they're absolutely wonderful. It's, it's. I've tried to explain to people the gal celebration is wonderful, but the gala is just so much more intimate and close, and you get to know people in the community in such a different way. And you literally open your home to everyone, and we get to be a part of this amazing place, which is a celebration of Star Wars, yes, but a celebration of culture of mythology, of merchandising and storytelling in such a unique way. And all of these people that are coming here, I have no doubt are here because they love you and they support you and they believe in what you're doing. It just warms my heart to hear this. It's got to make you feel great. Well, we're really happy with the response that we've been getting. And this all goes to support Ranch Obi-Wan. As you know, we've talked about this over the years. None of the money goes to buy collectibles. It's all for things like security and maintenance. And because of the wildfires in Northern California, our insurance has gone up by a third. Wow. Um, and uh, we have to uh, we have to do a lot of tree trimming to defend for dis defensible space. Uh, we need to put a uh, a sprinkler system on the roof at, at some expense to. Uh, just to help preserve Rancho Obi-Wan and make sure it doesn't burn down the next time we have a wildfire nearby. Um, and so uh, we are not able to do tours, obviously, because of the pandemic, and it's going to be a while before the tours can resume. Mm -hmm. We had to cancel our gala this June, and obviously Celebration was also canceled, and there won't be one for two years. And those were our two biggest fundraising uh, uh, projects of, of any year. So um, we've come up with this, and we think people are going to have a lot of fun. Fellow Star Wars fans have a way to get together, have a way to chat, um, uh, ask questions, um, and join fellow Star Wars fans in supporting Rancho Obi-Wan. It's wonderful. And, again, your lineup is just a blockbuster. People can – because I, of course, signed up, and I got, I got my link that you talked about. And so this is where people can access it and they can be a part of the conversation. They're going to hear, I mean, you're talking about, you just had some huge names from, from the history of Star Wars. I mean, my goodness, it's, it's staggering to think about. I know you've got Clayton on, our buddy Clayton Sandell is going to be on as well. Uh, it's just, it's unbelievable. So how does it work? So obviously it's, it's a live stream, so we're tuning in. And you mentioned that you're going to have a Q and A. Will there be an opera? Is there going to be like a chat place for fans to interact with one another as well? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> We're still working on some of the technical details. There sure. will be, as far as uh, there will be a chat function in some of the uh, some parts of the program. So um, the Q and A with me uh, and some of the other parts of the program there will be a chat function. Yes, I love it. And people will know. Of course, people sometimes on the chat have funny names, so you may not know exactly who it is. The old Jedi. Oh, who the heck is that? <laughs> uh, well, we'll figure it out. That's right. And you mentioned there's going to be some exclusive merchandise with the Gala logo. Is that the logo that I've been seeing online on all your social media platforms? Yes, designed by Eric Ehrlich, another huge Star Wars fan and a graphic uh, designer and illustrator. And Eric has done our logos and designs for the last several years and uh, did our, our art for uh, Celebration Chicago, which was a big success for us. So we're 
pleased to have him come up with the hollow projector idea and the virtual gala worked really nicely. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, one of the ones that stands out to me throughout the years is the, the gala strikes back the very reminiscent of the, of the Macquarie Vader patch that I believe the cast and crew had, right? Right. The Vader in flames patch. Yes. And that was, uh, that was the famous patch that then was made as a commercial patch. And then we glommed on to that for the uh, gala strikes back. And we were coming up with names for this year's gala, and events overtook us. Sure. Sure. Well, and that's one of the things I think is so wonderful about this, because we're taking something that isn't ideal, that no one wants to happen, and then we're, we're, we're adding community. And you have been at the forefront of making Star Wars a community by the fans and for the fans for such a long time, and now you're getting to experience it Virtually, yes, we don't get celebration, but you can be a part of the Rancho Obi Wan virtual gala, and you're going to feel those same kind of sensations and joys. Get to see a lot of Star Wars celebrities, learn a lot about Star Wars, as you mentioned, and to get to talk to you and get to know more of the museum is pretty exciting. Now, it's got—I mean, I know how exhausting the regular gala is for all of you. So, what what are you going to do to keep your, get yourself in gala shape? Because that's not an easy thing. I'm going to run on the treadmill for about 10 hours in advance. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's going to feel like. Yes. So we're, 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 we've been, as I said, we've been planning this for a couple of months. Uh, at the same time, we have, we've opened up our, our virtual museum. Mm -hmm. And so people can subscribe to our virtual museum. There's lots of video and photos. And we update that every week. With more information, there are five levels of subscription for the virtual museum. So we invite people to go to RanchoObiWan.org and look at the virtual museum and see if you want to join that. You can join as a member of Rancho Obi-Wan. You get your annual uh, kit with a unique patch. And your second year and every year after that, you get a unique pin and uh, a letter and uh, other kinds of information and uh, fun stuff. It's a it's a very handsome kit, and that helps support Rancho Obi Wan too. I've always I would love getting that. I've been a member of Rancho Obi Wan for years, and not only do you get that, but you also send out a holiday card, which I, is a huge highlight. Yeah, the, everybody loves the holiday card, and uh, we are uh, <clears throat> a little late getting to that. So we, it may be a New Year <laughs> card this year, which everybody is looking forward to twenty twenty one. Yes, so I think that. That will work very nicely. That's right. Well, I love it. Well, Steve, it's always wonderful to have you on Coffee with Kenobi. I will certainly be there for the Rancho Obi-Wan Virtual Gala. And I trust that all of you listening right now to Coffee with Kenobi, members of this wonderful Star Wars community that we have, there's no one finer than Steve Sansweet. So let's support him. Let's support Rancho Obi-Wan. Go to RanchoObiWan.org. Sign up. It's only $30, which I think is an absolute bargain. And you're going to get a ton of quality Star Wars entertainment and hang out with a lot of great people. Thank you very much, Dan. And the day is November 21st, and the preview is November 20th. You'll be able to download some information and some uh, art in order to get uh, ready for the 21st, and we're looking forward to having a wonderful Star Wars weekend. Hear, hear. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is your one-stop shop for your vacation needs and your plans to Walt Disney World, Disneyland, or the cruise lines. Travel looks much different now than it did a couple of months ago, and with the opening of Walt Disney World and soon, hopefully, the opening of Disneyland, you need a place to go where you can trust, and they will help you figure out and navigate all the different circumstances and guidelines that Disney has put out for you. And I can say that we had our vacation modified, and as soon as dates were announced, MEI contacted me directly to help me reschedule, which is exactly what I was hoping to do. So if you are interested in rescheduling your vacation or want to try to plan a Walt Disney World Disneyland vacation or anywhere else you want to go on the planet, be sure to contact MEI and Mouse Fan Travel at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel. Their signature service and expert advice will help you maximize your vacation time and dollar, and they will help you figure out all the different changes and modifications going on at the Disney theme parks. They are amazing, and I can tell you honestly from the bottom of my heart, 
the peace of mind that Becky Mencken and the crew at MEI and Mouse Fan Travel have given me is invaluable. If you're interested at all, again, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel. As promised, we are going to share with you a conversation I had with three other members of the Star Wars media to talk with the Star Wars creative team at Hasbro and discuss the HasLab Razor Crest, the Holiday Black Series Troopers, and so much more. So let's just dive right in. And I suppose the team I should mention from Hasbro is Patrick Schneider and Chris Reif. We'll kick it off and... I think just first we would say thank you guys so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, we, we've done a few of these already today. They're just so fun. Like, obviously, we appreciate kind of the interaction and uh, we appreciate kind of, you know, the chance to talk to your fan bases. But just this is also just a fun way for us to spend a few hours. So so thanks for allowing us to geek out on Star Wars. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, so let's kick it off with uh, Dan from Star Wars Collector. Yeah, um, I, my question was uh, about the Black Series 6-inch uh, Anakin Skywalker Padawan, uh, figure 110. In the prototype, it showed that it had a cloth uh, skirt, but uh, the uh, product showing up at retail is missing it. Was that a manufacturing error, or did you guys change it? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the history of that one. Uh, Patrick, do you know any specifics on that? I mean, uh, no, yeah, no. So that's certainly something we can look into, Dan, and uh, we can have LPR circle back. Okay. Great. All right. We'll go next to Dan with Coffee with Kenobi. All right. Well, hey, thanks, guys. Pleasure to chat with you again, as always. Uh, I was interested uh, in the Holiday Troopers. I think they're wonderful. I want to. I wanted to hear about the inspiration behind them. How did this idea evolve and what eventually persuaded Lucasfilm to make these amazing figures happen? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's interesting. With everything Star Wars, there's such a legacy and a history to it. And so obviously kind of Star Wars, you know, has a great history with the holidays. And, you know, I think we talked about this in the the reveal of the figures at PulseCon. Like, you know, it's all about the family and holidays. And, you know, I, I know for me, like, that's a time where we always watch Star Wars movies. And and obviously the troopers, I, I think we've seen kind of fans do great things with trooper helmets. And so we were like, well, these are a fantastic canvas. Like, you know, wouldn't these make amazing looking holiday figures? And so, um, yeah, it's interesting. I think when we revealed them, we talked about the conversation with Lucasfilm and, and they were totally receptive. Like Star Wars, you know, it, it, it sparks such amazing creativity with fans and also internally. And we've seen fans do such amazing things with holiday decor. Uh, around Star Wars. So, you know, I forget who had the idea initially, but they had it and, and we all loved it. And so we brought it to life. And, you know, we certainly saw some some fun comments on both sides from the fans. But, uh, you know, on pre-order that we, we were pleased and we're excited to see how they do uh, do once they go on shelf. Yeah, I love and, it. Well, and you, and you saw like we joked around with Chris from Lucasfilm about it on that on the stream. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's one of those ones and we've said this before, it's, they're not taking away from mainline figures. So they're just additive. And they're, they're a super fun way, we think, to keep the universe fun and playing for us, the toy universe. So, Absolutely, and it should be fun. So hear me out, Millennium Falcon yeah. Holiday Edition, just think it over. <laughs> there we go. We'll put it in the pipeline. Um, all right, Francesca. Hi. What do you got for us? Hi. <laughs> Uh, my first question is about uh, the back series. I'd like to know, uh, we are going to got the gaming greats and the other outside characters like Dina Solo and Dr. Afra. So any plans about other comics and books, characters from canonic media or, or the expanded universe legends, legacies? Well, yeah, I mean, we'll probably say it multiple times during these questions, but we can't talk about stuff that, that might be coming. Um, but rest assured, we're as excited about those figures that you mentioned or characters mm -hmm. that you mentioned as fans are. I mean, because that's us too. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, I can't say anything about what our future might hold, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely excited about the ones that have already happened, mm -hmm. and we look to that as inspiration for going forward too. So, Thanks a lot. Absolutely. All righty, Steve from the Force Guide. I, I want to be where you are, Steve. How do I uh, how do I get my invite? <laughs> Looks a lot more fun than my. You're on office. mute, Steve. 
unmute. Yes. There you go. All right. So my question, uh, the Black Series Clone Trooper and Stormtrooper figures are fantastic, but why do they have blank white heads underneath the helmets? And why glue the helmets onto the heads? The glue sometimes isn't the symbol at the correct angle, which distorts the helmets. Yeah, I mean, the, those sort of, of issues, we, we work with our vendors to make sure we, we eliminate that as much as possible. I mean, there's, there are obviously problems that will show up from time to time, but we address those things and, and try and move past them. The, the particulars of the white head versus why it's not a, a, a black smocked head under there or a figure sculpt or something like that. I and mean, it, it just depends on the figure and what, what we're trying to achieve and what we think the fans would like there. So there are a lot of, a lot of things that go into all that, but and we look at, we look at all those sorts of issues as we go and continuously try and improve things. So. Thank you. Great. All right. Back to the top with uh, Dan. Uh, is it Emmons or Amons? No, Emmons. You said it right Great. first. Yep. Should have gone with my gut. <laughs> so a lot of people thought for sure that the Black Series Six Inch Princess Light Hut Slayer figure would have won the 2020 Black Series Archive fan vote, but it ended up, ended up being Commander Cody. Any chance we'll get updated Princess Leia uh, Hut Slayer figure, or the or are the rumors true that Disney will not let you guys uh, produce that figure anymore? Yeah, it's funny. I I've read that comment online. We were we were convinced <laughs> that Cody was going to win just because on the uh, initial round of fan site voting. Yeah. Uh, I think it was something like 15 out of 20 sites uh, he was the leader. Um, and so going into the final round, we were like, oh, well, this is pretty anticlimactic. But um, yeah. And we, we were certainly excited. Cody's a great figure, and we were excited to see him come back. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, Hut Slayer Leia, you know, obviously it's, it's always a conversation with the fan community, and kind of we love your, your feedback. We love your responses. Um, you know, right now that – particular version of Leia. And again, Leia is a fantastic character, uh, kind of core to the uh, saga. You know, it doesn't really fit uh, where we're uh, hoping to take the line. Uh, but that's just one factor that we take into account. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the background on the, the fan vote. And uh, we were, we were kind of expecting to see Cody win and he did. Was the rumor about Disney not allowing you guys to produce that figure? Is there any truth to that or no? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I haven't heard uh, anything about that. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, Dan from Coffee with Kenobi. Sorry, it helps to unmute yourself. <laughs> why, why would a podcaster know that? I don't know. <laughs> so with the excitement surrounding the retro Marvel and the G.I. Joe three and three quarter inch lines, can we look forward to more from the retro Kenner Star Wars line in the future? Now, I did write this before the amazing reveal of the Mandalorian. <laughs> so, but, so, yes, you know, retro Mandalorian. Uh, oh, no. Great. <laughs> Best yeah, news as, ever. Yeah. As, as Chris said, we can't like, you know, reveal any specifics. Oh, sure. things that like retro, we've been so excited about retro, like, and, and just the response, like we, we initially put that out there, you know, we thought it would be fun. Um, but just the response has been fantastic, both from new fans who love the styling and also from kind of existing fans who, I remember when we announced it, uh, maybe not you guys, but like the response was like, oh, I don't know. But then when it came out, like everyone loved it. So we think the future is bright for retro. Like, again, without revealing any specifics, we'd be crazy not to do more retro. So I think it's safe to say there's more retro coming down the pipe. Sure. And I definitely don't expect any reveals on this, of course, because that just is just not the way things work. And I'm great with that. I just want you to know that I have a mop in my classroom now because my brain actually exploded when I saw those images. <laughs> so That's awesome. thank you. My doctor That's thanks it. you too. Yeah. And retro Mando is something we were like, we were kind of oh. curious about. Because uh, it's not kind of the original figures, but we were like, those will just look so cool. We have to do it. So it's been great to see the excitement there oh, as well. It's, it's the best thing. Best thing That's awesome. ever. Yeah. Great. Thanks for saying that. Of course. Um, all righty. Francesca. Yeah. I want to talk about more for, uh, the Christmas themes figures are amazing. I go crazy for the porks. So <laughs> plural. I want more porks. <laughs> How you choose to put the porks with the troopers? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> why, why you put the porks inside the boxes with the troopers? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good question. I, I think we <laughs> talked about this when we revealed them and launched them. Like, 
the, the holiday figures were a great uh, collaboration with uh, Hasbro and Lucasfilm. And it always is their, you know, the best partners in the world, uh, I think, in my unbiased opinion. But uh, it was just a great back and forth and lots of great ideas on both sides, I think. I think the Porgs uh, actually came from Lucasfilm. I think that was their idea. Chris Stern talked about how he loved kind of the, the little buddies uh, in all those packs. And uh, they make great Porgwins, uh, as we call them, the Porg Penguins. So, yeah, those were a lot of fun. Uh, you know, again, we were excited to see kind of how they did after the pre-order launched. And we're excited to see how they do once they're on shelf. And, you know, as always, like, if, if you guys like something, it's probably a pretty good bet there will be more coming in the future. So we'll see how those do. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All righty, Steve. Hasbro Pulse has been getting very good at online pre-orders lately, but on websites for some of your major retail partners like Target and Walmart, they have problems with limiting the volume of orders and protecting against scalper bots, which pre-order all of the products in mere seconds, leaving nothing behind for actual collectors. What uh, that forces collectors to decide between uh, not getting collectibles or buying them from a scalper or, or going, you know, to stores more often during, you know, the pandemic. Uh, can you use the force and get your retail partners, you know, to uh, strengthen their anti-scalper, you know, bot protection, you know, like a good yeah. capture of the way the pulse does. So fans yeah. can actually get the pre-orders. Yeah. So I will say, just taking a step back, we're aware of this. We're aware of frustrations. And, and we said this before, but like, if there are frustrations out there, like we, we feel them as well. And we take them seriously. Obviously, like it's in all of our interests. We all want like the product that Chris and the team of designers and our whole cross-functional team, like they, we, they spend so much time on these things. Like we absolutely want to get them to every fan out there who wants them. And you know, that's why we do all this because we love seeing kind of the passion and the joy. So, so just know we're on the same page here. Um, you know, Walmart, Target, Amazon, they are all great partners. Like we love working with them. The, the fan business has grown in the past, you know, 15 years, 10 years, even five years has exploded. And so there's kind of a renewed focus on that business and on kind of the, the details and the processes that make it happen. So we're in conversations with them. They're aware and we're all basically working towards making that process better and kind of making the whole process of getting product to the fans better. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty. I think we're back to the top uh, with Dan Emmons. Yeah. Um, the vintage collection uh, 3.75 Baby Yoda at Prem that's included with the Razor Crest. People that can't afford the Razor Crest are asking if uh, you'll offer it a single carded at regular retailers, maybe in a different paint application. I know the one with the Razor Crest is supposed to be exclusive to it. Yeah, well, I mean, we can't, again, can't talk about anything that might be coming in the future, yeah. but I mean, the one that's with the Razor Crest is exclusive to the Razor Crest. So that would be the only way to get that particular version of him. Okay. So that's with the in the figure or the deco and the pram sort of thing. I mean, the, like we tried to really plus that up and make that extra special for fans that were buying the Razor Crest. Okay. But that doesn't, so that, that version as is, the only way to get that would be the Razor Crest. Okay, yeah, I assume you guys are going to make it since it's so popular, but you can't say it right now. So. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. it's, I mean, I would say that the safe bet that the popularity <laughs> of that character is going to, force our hand a little bit at some point, but yeah. All right, and, and we do actually have a vintage, the child that has been revealed uh, in a buildup pack with uh, the Mandalorian. Yeah, uh, it was revealed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, that one's currently out there, but I think, I think Chris is right. Like we haven't seen the last of uh, the child in, in yeah, any everyone wants the <laughs> little pram that comes with it. So <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. We'll see. Um, all right, Dan coffee with Kenobi. Yes. So uh, this isn't really, isn't really a question, more of a statement. Um, it's just putting out a plug for uh, the three and three quarter inch line. Obviously, the, the vintage collection is magnificent. The sculpts are beautiful. Um, but so we have that and we love it. But I miss the days of film specific card backs for an entire line. And obviously, we didn't get that for the Rise of Skywalker either. Is it is it kind of fair to say that that's sort of for the time being gone the way of Palpatine? Finally. <laughs> yeah, which Palpatine? F6 Palpatine or F9? Uh, 
Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, we did uh, put it in the vault. Uh, I don't know if you uh, saw that live stream, but with our Celebrate yes. the Saga collection. So yeah, three and three quarters inch, five POA, um, you know, is in the vault. Um, so yeah, in terms of those kid lines, it, it, it's interesting. We, we we try to listen to both fans and kids, kind of what they're looking for. So sure. fans, you, you know, and I, I totally agree, both are cool. I think fans kind of like really value the vintage collection. And so that's where we focused on for fan focused three and three quarters inch. Mm -hmm. um, and then kid, we, we do have the Galaxy of Adventure lines, the Mission sure. Fleet line. And so those are kind of based on our, our consumer insights that we've conducted around what kids are looking for. And so that's the direction for the future with uh, three and three quarters inch five POA in the vault. And then we'll just see what happens in the future. You know, as, as always, if there's demand for something, we'll, we'll probably work to try to meet it. I love it. Great. Awesome. Francesca. So my other question is um, about the packaging. We got the carbonized figures, great artworks on the boxes. In other words, the boxes become a collectible items himself. So collectors are always worried about possible damages during the delivery process, et cetera. Did you find or did you thought about something so different solution for that? Um, yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, you're right. Obviously with, with all of our fan lines, the packaging is, you know, as important as the product, like with the vintage collection, it's, yeah. it's definitely on with carbonized. You're right. Like we applied that special treatment. And so the packaging is important. Um, I, I think this goes to that other question of like, we know there's sometimes damage. Uh, that's not in anyone's interest. No one likes that. And so we're continually working with our retail partners on, on ways to address and improve that. And that applies to carbonized figures, but definitely our whole fan line. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Steve. Uh, the pandemic has caused shipping schedules to change all over. Product originally slated for the spring, being found now in the fall. Lots of stuff hitting collector, collectors' wallets all at once. With months of pandemic experience under your belts now, do you feel you've gotten a better handle on production and pacing challenges? And if so, will we be seeing a smoother release cycle from here on out? Yeah, so it's it's been a, a challenging year for everyone, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. It, it, there certainly have been some hiccups kind of, you know, across the board. Um, you know, I think Hasbro, like a lot of companies, has learned from the past, what is it now, eight months. Um, and as we've said kind of repeatedly, like there's never a situation where if something's not going well that we're like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's fine. Like we are, we spend our days and, and nights and weekends in some cases, like continually trying to like hone the rough edges and like both on the figures themselves, but then obviously on distribution and getting things through. And so that's the case in normal times and, and certainly also when a curveball is thrown our way. So, um, yeah, we've definitely learned from the past eight months and, and, and we'll, we'll continue learning. I'm sure more curveballs will come up, but, but we're hopeful that the, the next eight months in the future will look better. And, and that, that even goes when the pandemic's over. Like we've always talked about distribution and we've, we've done things like, you know, five language packaging that's helped distribution in Europe. Uh, we've done things like less waves. And so, we're continually thinking about and trying new things to help product get in the hands of fans. Thank you. Cool. Um, Dan Emmons. Um, why release the Ventures Collection Razor Crest as a HasLab has project and not just uh, release it as a normal release and, or a store exclusive? It uh, probably would have sold well, and Hasbro HasLab could have used the opportunity to give something out of the norm, like a Death Star playset or something along those lines. Yeah, the the Death Star play set is is a cool idea. It's one asking. <laughs> I know it's one we've talked about internally. Like it, it would be really cool. Uh, in terms of the Razor Crest, like Haslab is you know that as we stated when we launched it, I think it's on the website. Like it's the platform for dream products that that we think you know wouldn't wouldn't work in traditional brick and mortar retail. And so kind of just the price point of the Razor Crest, the size, like fitting that box you know on a shelf, um, and just you know. Uh, Honestly, like just some of the challenges around vintage vehicles, like we thought that this was the only way to do it. And honestly, like if there wasn't a HasLab, we wouldn't have done it in, in normal retail. So like we were glad HasLab exists because it gave us a way to get a vintage razor pressed out there. Uh, and honestly, at the quality that it deserves, like, you know, we could have cer certainly cut corners, made it smaller, et cetera. But like a creature, uh, sorry, a vehicle like this, you know, at this point, I think it has more screen time than any Star Wars vehicle other than maybe the Millennium Falcon. Like it's so central to the show and we wanted to do it justice. And 
honestly, like the work that Chris did, you know, as the lead designer on it, like it looks amazing. Um, right. You know, that, that deco reveal video, like, you know, I showed it to my wife who like, you know, I love her. She, she's not that into Star Wars. She's like, I would even buy that. So uh, like that to me was, it, it's just amazing. And so we wanted to do it right. And Haslab was the way to do that. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. Dan, Z, Z, I should have asked this sooner. Is it Zer? Zer? It is. It is Zer. But my nom de plume on everything is Dan Z. So that's perfect. There we go. All right. Dan Z. Yeah, What's man. up? Uh, so regarding the retro line, is there a market for bringing back the Star Wars micro collection back from the 80s or the classic 12-inch series on Hasbro Pulse? Is there a market, you think? Is there a market? I mean, for me personally, like, I love them. <laughs> like, yes. I'm, I mean, I think the overall theme you guys can probably get from this is that we're as big a fans of all of this product as you are. And, and whether it's stuff on my shelf here or on the shelves downstairs, I mean, I'm, I'm littered with this stuff. I mean, plans, like, we can't comment on any plans. Um, but in, I think Patrick said it before, a lot of stuff is kind of in the vault and, and in our heads as, as stuff to look to, either for inspiration or future product. But, yeah. I mean. Sure. Thank you. Cool. Francesca. Hey. So I can't um, ask about new products, so I just want to say thank you for release the Dart, Dart Revan and Dart Sidious lightsaber. And finally, you can ask, you can ask Francesca. <laughs> we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, say what we can. <laughs> I I'd like to know if you have in mind to um, produce a dark saber replica in the future. Um, well, we can't talk about anything we haven't released yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I'm aware of it yeah, just now. But yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're excited about all the all the content that's currently on. So mm, okay. um, and yeah, like I I jumped into the the team and and I'm amazed by all the stuff that has come previously, all the features and stuff of the sabers. I mean, I wasn't involved in the development of the the Sidious or the Darth Revan sabers, but mm. they're they're amazing. Yeah, and as a as a fan and collector myself, like I, I'm excited by those. So looking forward to more stuff in those directions. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, Steve. With the going back to Haslab, but the re- recent announcement uh, of the Razor Crest, we, we were wondering what lessons the Star Wars team took away from watching other Haslab pro- projects successes and challenges and how those were applied to creating a project like the Razor Crest. Uh, having, having Marvel do theirs, I mean, their campaign was happening while we were working on the early stages of the Razor Crest. So seeing how the Sentinel played out, um, I think that was, that was something that, that definitely informed a lot of our thought early on and how that might work. So um, I think the answer, yes. Like it informed our decisions. How exactly? I mean, we thought a lot more about tiers and how many tiers we might need and might want. Um, we put some early thinking in on that. I, I think Patrick will probably agree. We a little underestimated the how successful the response would be. So we we like we saw them having to scramble a little bit for tiers, and we ended up having to do the same thing. Even seeing their experience. <laughs> we still didn't quite get it right. So it's like we've said before, it's a learning process and we're excited for that because it keeps us buzzing around the office. And if we were, if we were getting everything perfect straight out of the gate every time, it wouldn't be any fun. Yeah. yeah I think it's great. Each has that project keeps building on the ones before it. The other real area is international sales. So, you know, Francesca, for example, like in Italy, fans couldn't get the barge. Like, there was a you know small quantity available, I think, a year after the HasLab campaign. And now this HasLab campaign is live across the EU through Zavi in Mexico, Peru, several markets in Asia, uh, Australia, New Zealand. So like that's, again, a place where Marvel made great strides. And we were able to build on that uh, and get it kind of even more to fans. So, yeah, we're definitely all talking. Good. Great tier choices, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Well, just out of curiosity, what were your favorites? Of all the tiers, the Hello? stand for me. I think the stand's awesome. I love that. 
Yeah, the stand's pretty cool. Oh, awesome. yeah, for, for me, for sure, this is the stand. Okay, That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good to know. All right, back to the top. We've got a lightning round here for our last question. So, Dan Emmons, lightning round question for you. Uh, what does the 50th Lucasfilm LTD logo represent on the new Black Series Archive six, Sections figures? I take it we'll see this logo on a bunch of upcoming products as well. So, so here's here's an area we can't we can't even dance around a little bit. So I'll, I'll just repeat what we said in our PulseCon one that it's it's interesting that we see that there. Fans, you know, go go check that out if you haven't already, and there there will be more coming here. Cool. Sorry, that was that was that was a good lightning round question because it was a short answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there will be more coming. Um, Dan Z. Yes. So talk about the overwhelming success of the HasLab Razor Crest campaign and what it says about Star Wars collectors. Is that one on me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think Chris. that's a, I don't think that's a short answer. I no, mean, I think, it probably isn't. Yeah. And the, I think what it says is that everyone's passionate about current, current entertainment as much as classic entertainment. And I think it, it speaks to just the power of those stories, how well that campaign has done. So. Yeah. Here, here. And the quality that all of you are putting into this is just unbelievable. It's all Chris. It's all Chris. <laughs> you, rock, Chris. Oh, it's, you rock, Chris. You rock, dude. It's a Keep big, it it's a big team. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So. It's wonderful. I think the only other thing it told us is uh, it continued to tell us information about the demand for vintage collection products. So we've, yeah. we've had a, a great year. We've loved seeing kind of the petitions and the, the online campaigns. I, I forget if we mentioned this in this round or a previous round, but uh, it's been great information. So seeing that, I think it's, you know, north of 15,000 at this point. It uh, is maybe 16, 16 it's over 16. I just refreshed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So that's amazing. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. great to see. Uh, it's great new information. Well, if you ever decide to do a, uh, a HasLab campaign to make action figures of Star Wars authors, I'm first to sign up. <laughs> awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Uh, Francesca, lightning round. Um, yeah, I want to talk about dolls. We got the forces of destiny. Uh, can we expect more other earrings, female-focused line? Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a good question. I, I love the, the uh, Forces of Destiny line. Like, it was a great yeah. line. Uh, I think it was a few years ago. You know, there's there's no plans right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, as always, Star Wars, it's a diverse fan base. Uh, it's right. a diverse property. Uh, and we're always looking at ways to kind of celebrate that diversity and bring, uh, certainly focus on the, the lines that are existing that fans want more of, like vintage and black series and, and retro. But retro is a great example, right? It didn't exist a year ago. Um, and so, and we launched it, we tried something new and fans love it and, and now it's great. So, so we're always looking for, for new things that fans want while also Thanks. focusing on the existing ones. Yep. Um, great. Steve, bring us home. What sort of choices go into picking which characters get new figures and which get re-released? Uh, sorry, what was that? What sort of choices go into picking which characters get new figures and which get re-released got it chris do you want to take this one or i'm happy to uh well i think we probably both have input on this i mean i okay. think it's i mean back to the answer of like we're fans and it's what figures we want to see as much as anything but also hearing from you guys and seeing the chatter online seeing what figures are, are popular what characters and new content are popular it's it's kind of a mix of all that data going into the team and then we sit down and talk about it so Absolutely. All righty. I think that's it. I think Chris and I need to dash and, and shove some food in our mouths before <laughs> our next interviews. Uh, but again, just thank you guys so much. Like, you know, I said this at the top, but like really appreciate you taking the time. I'm sure it's your lunch hour as well, or, you know, Francesca, your dinner hour. Uh, and we just always appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate kind of hearing from you guys, what your fans, your readers are talking about. And again, just thanks for giving us the chance to geek out about Star Wars. It's always fun. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you all so much. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Great talking with everybody. Bye. Bye. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs>that's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a cup of coffee with me and for helping to spread the word about our Star Wars family we've got here at Coffee with Kenobi. 
Be sure to tune in Monday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live at www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash live or www.facebook.com slash coffeewithkenobi and have a cup of coffee, tea, or any beverage of your choosing with me as we continue the conversation. To join us in the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group, and share your Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions in a family-friendly, spoiler-free place that is also drama-free, go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community and be part of the conversation, talk about this week's show, or just talk about some Star Wars. It is a lot of fun and you'll make some new friends as well as catch up with longtime friends along the way. I also want to thank all of the new and longtime members of the CWK Alliance and let you know how much I appreciate your help and encouragement. A big thank you to our CWK Alliance members, Mary Perdue, Jason Hall, Dennis Keithley, Ross Hollivan, Cato McNichol, Alexander Moylan, Jim Capron, Smooth Rivera, Tyler Pompa, Frank Mulder, Colby Mead, LJ Souter, Daz Davies, Dustin Mills, Robert Avila, Terry King, Jeff Ellis, David Nicely, Chris Gavarka, Angela Sauce, Aaron Harris, Greg McLaughlin, Eric Struthers, Christine Turk, Brian McKinney, Alex Procasio, Hannah, Susan Gray, Ian Thompson, Dan Ream, Christian Dale, J.C. Poe, Ed Kimoto, Blake Weaver, Chelsea Sansbury, Yancey Evans, Craig Hargrove, Chris Metz, Connie Shee, Mark Suter, Jared Cantor, Kurt McKellen, Thea Selby, and Simbot Defterdarian. If you want to join the CWK Alliance, be sure to go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance and sign up today. Not only will you help out Coffee with Kenobi, but you also get access to CWK Portover, the exclusive weekly podcast not heard anywhere else. It's a great way to support and help out the show, and 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital to support the incredibly important work they are doing to help these brave children and their families. Plus, contributors at the CWK All-Star level can watch a video podcast of CWK Portover hosted by me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. In addition to being part of the community on Facebook, please don't forget to visit our website at www.coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, live video, and so much more. If you have a question for me or just want to share your thoughts on the air, please feel free to reach out to me at danz at coffeewithkenobi.com and I'll share them on the show. You can also connect with me on Twitter at Mr. Zer, M-R-Z-E-H-R. There are also a lot of ways to connect with me and Coffee with Kenobi on social media. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi. And check us out on Pinterest. You can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network. And you can find my writing on CWK's website, as well as starwars.com, where I'm an official blogger there, as well as on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars, as well as other popular culture topics. And if you're considering starting a podcast or a blog, let me know how I can help you get started and help you make your creative vision a reality. Be sure to check out danzymedia.com and we can get the process started. I'm also available to come to your school, conference, business, or organization to talk about how to tap into your strengths and help you bring out your very best. You can take that first step into a larger world. Thanks as always to our CWK sponsors, especially MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, our travel partner and your one-stop shop for all things Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the Disney Cruise Lines, or anywhere on the planet, please go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel to book your magical vacation and help support Coffee with Kenobi in the process. And don't forget to pre-order my brand new book that I wrote alongside Pablo Hidalgo and Cole Horton, The Star Wars Book, published by DK. Be sure to pre-order your copy of The Star Wars Book today. I can't wait to share it with each and every one of you. If you like the show, please tweet out that you're listening, share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. And if the Force is especially with you, please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on iTunes or Google Podcasts. Every review makes a huge difference and helps to spread the word. Go to iTunes and search Coffee with Kenobi and you'll see the show there. My circle of friends has grown so much because of this podcast and each and every one of you, and it means so much to me that we have such a wonderful Star Wars community. Thank you all so much for all you do. What a show, right? What a week. I mean, we have Steve Sansweet on. We have some of the creatives behind Hasbro's Star Wars line. So much fun. Earlier in the week, you heard... 
us talking about the Mandalorian episode, The Heiress, with James Burns and Matt Sheehan. It's been so much fun sharing all this with you, of course, on Coffee with Kenobi. Be sure to get your top five list ready to talk about Chapter 12 of The Mandalorian next week on Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook page. And again, don't forget to go to the Rancho Obi-Wan Virtual Gala. Be sure to sign up on RanchoObiWan.org. I will certainly be there on November 21st. Have a great Thanksgiving. Have fun. Eat some of your favorites. Enjoy your time with your family. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. Talk to you soon, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. 